Yo, NFL fans, welcome back to the J All Day Sports Show. You're here just in time for my Tuesday Picks video. We're going to go through all of the NFL games this week, all 16 of them. We got a full slate of games this week. We got a lot to dive into. I'm going to give you picks with scores for each and every one of these games. Guys, here is our record for the year. We're 65 and 42. That's coming in around 60%. But the last two weeks, we've been on fire, guys. 23 wins out of 29 potential picks. That's 80%. That's why if you're interested in sports betting or you want to support the channel, consider joining my memberships. Guys, we're picking right 80% of the time over the last two weeks. That's why you guys got to subscribe. All right, let's get into week eight picks and scores. Vikings at the Rams kicks off week eight. I don't think this game is going to be really close. The Vikings are going to bounce back from a very tough loss to the Detroit Lions. The Rams, however, just put Cooper Cup on the trade block, right? They're willing to pay some, if not most, of his salary in exchange for for a second round pick. He's got two years this year and next year left with guaranteed money. The year after that, no more guaranteed money for Cooper Cup. So maybe a wide receiver desperate team like the Kansas City Chiefs, maybe they take on trading a late second round pick for Cooper Cup to really ensure that Patrick Mahomes has someone to throw the ball to in the playoffs. But Cooper Cup comes with that injury history, so I don't love that personally. Minnesota Vikings win this game. They're going to bounce back. I love this spot for the Vikings, 31-17. The Rams just do not have enough firepower to stay with the Vikings. Even if Cooper Cup is back, I think the Vikings dominate this game. They do have a really good defense. They didn't really play great against the Lions, but the Lions are stacked. Other Lions news, Jameson Williams PEDs, he's facing a two-game suspension, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Is it going to start now? Is it going to be later in the year? We'll have to keep our eye on that, but in this particular game, it doesn't matter. I'm going with the Vikings, 31-17. Next up, we move on to the Titans on the road, playing the Lions at home. Good luck, Tennessee. Good luck. The quarterback situation there is terrible, right? They actually played the Bills pretty tough in the first half, but then... You know, the defense is just on the field so much and so much and so much. They get tired. The Bills take over, right? Mason Rudolph, Will Levis, it doesn't matter. The, even uh, Calvin Ridley had like two or three drops in this game. I expect them to trade DeAndre Hopkins at some point. But the Lions are going to blow them out. It's not even going to be close. 34-13. Next up, the Green Bay Packers are going on the road to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars and Packers both had nice wins last week. The Packers only being four and a half point favorites kind of blows my mind a little bit, especially because the Packers have the most opportunistic defense in the NFL. They lead the NFL in defensive turnovers. The Jacksonville Jaguars offense isn't very good, right? Gabe Davis, Brian Thomas Jr., Bigsby at the running back position. I don't think NTN's going to play in this game. Jordan Love has to stop throwing interceptions, right? I think they win this game. I like the Packers, right? But Jordan Love has to stop with the interceptions, man. He's being a little careless with the football. Luckily, this defense and a solid run game has been kind of bailing him out the past few weeks. That's not going to last forever. Luckily, they're playing the Jaguars, who are not very good, right? And the Jaguars have spent the last two weeks and change over in London, so they had to fly across the ocean to come back home. I like the Packers in this spot. I'm going with 31-20. They absolutely dominate. I don't like the Jaguars having to fly across the pond. They're not very good to begin with. The defensive line is okay. The secondary is not very good. The Packers have really good young wide receivers. Josh Jacobs is an absolute beast. And the Packers are coming off a big win over the Houston Texans. And if they could do that to the Texans, they could dominate the Jaguars. There's no doubt in my mind. Next, we move up to a game from week one. Colts versus the Texans. They were in Indianapolis last time. And... C.J. Stroud has been considerably better at quarterback at home than he's been on the road where he played in week one. The line's at five and a half. I like the Texans at home in this spot. Right, C.J. Stroud has a 
3.8 rating at home. It's like in the 60s on the road, right? And Anthony Richardson has been abysmal on the road, guys. Less than a 50% completion percentage. And listen to this, guys. A 41.8 passer rating when he's on the road. He's... I'm not a big fan, man. I don't think he's good. He's not accurate with the football at all. He's athletic, right? He can do some things with his legs. But, man, passing the ball, he doesn't really – he overthrows guys, underthrows guys. He doesn't give his wide receivers a chance. And they have a pretty good room of wide receivers over there. Is Jonathan Taylor going to play in this game? That's a huge question mark as well. He's missed the last few weeks with some injuries. I don't believe in Anthony Richardson, especially right now. He's been reeling. I like the Texans. In this spot, 27 to 20. Next up is a game that we're not going to have a lot to talk about. Just a little bit. Baltimore Ravens on the road taking on the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, it's a division game. But the Browns are awful. They traded Amari Cooper to the Buffalo Bills. Deshaun Watson just blew out his Achilles. He's done for the year. They're going to be... Jameis Winston, I guess, is going to be the starting quarterback there. We'll wait for that announcement later in the week. I think minus nine is not enough, right? I love the Ravens. The Ravens absolutely destroyed the Buccaneers. The the stat line at the end of the game, the box score, wasn't indicative of how that game was played and ultimately dominated by the Baltimore Ravens. They just look so good right now. They're playing complimentary football. The defense has been getting better and better. They're still not a great unit, right? by any stretch of the imagination, but the Browns don't have a lot of weapons. Nick Chubb got off to a really slow start coming back last week. I expect that to be slow going for Nick Chubb for the first few weeks at least. I look for the Baltimore Ravens to dominate this game. Like, how could they not dominate this game? I'm saying 38-10, Baltimore Ravens, another W. I think getting in this line under 10 points is a great potential bet for this week. The Browns' defense is okay, but you can shred them on the ground a little bit, in my opinion. So I think Derrick Henry goes off again. He's been unbelievable this year. It's like 150 yards every week. Just check it off the box, man. Absolutely crazy. All right. Finally, next up, we have a very competitive game. My Philadelphia Eagles. Go, Birds! Cincinnati Bengals. The Eagles got to go on the road. Not a great spot. This is going to be a very, very close game. Let's take a look at the PFF Depth chart, see where these teams could potentially have an advantage, right? The Eagles' offensive line has been okay this year. Fred Johnson, who's been in for my lotta, he's been awful. One of the worst tackles in the NFL. But Lane Johnson, on the other side, he's still one of the best right tackles in all of football, if not one of the best tackles overall. He's been great. A.J. Brown has been unbelievable. I, I can't say enough things about A.J. Brown and his ability to make contested catches. It's pretty unbelievable. Obviously, Saquon Barkley has been great. Hurts has been okay. So where can they take advantage of this Bengals defense? It's pretty much everywhere, right? They're not real. They're they're okay. Hendrickson's really good against the pass, and they're going to have to really double team and chip Hendrickson, right? The Eagles are really going to have to give Fred Johnson some help with Hendrickson, who's one of the premier pass rushers in the league. You're going to have to bring in another tight end, maybe two tight end sets, put uh, Dots into the bench, or Calcaterra is going to have to line up right next to, to let Lane Johnson be on an island. Fred Johnson needs the help. He's going to need it in this game. Hendrickson is a beast, right? So they're going to have to take care of him. The rest of the guys, they're okay. The quarterbacks and safeties are definitely beatable for sure. Calcaterra could have a big game in this spot, and they don't have anyone on the Bengals' defense that can cover A.J. Brown one-on-one. So even if they rotate coverage over to him and double cover him, Devontae Smith could have a huge day because there's no safety or cornerback on this Bengals' roster that could cover either Brown or Devontae Smith one-on-one. That's a good spot for the Eagles, right? Can the offensive line block? We'll see, right? All right, let's flip it over. The Eagles' defense has been okay. We see the D-line, not great PFF grades. Carter's been the best, which we thought. Sweat had a nice game last week. They got right. They had like eight sacks against the Giants, but the Giants' offensive line is an abomination. But the Bengals' offensive line is not much better if we take a look at these grades, right? But Burrow gets the ball out fast, and like I said before, 
none of these corners can cover Jamar Chase or T. Higgins one-on-one, in my opinion. T. Higgins has got blazing speed. Jamar Chase leads the NFL in yards after contact and yards after catch. I mean, it's just unbelievable what he's able to do with the ball in his hands. Jamar Chase is unbelievable. This is going to be a very close game. The Eagles' secondary has been okay. Quinion Mitchell has been unbelievable as a rookie. Cooper DeGene has looked pretty good in limited action so far this year. I think the Eagles are a solid bet, guys, if we go with the plus two and a half points. I think that's the way to go to bet this game. You do the Eagles plus two and a half. Now, who do I ultimately think wins this game? I've been going back and forth and back and forth. Okay. If the Bengals had a good running back like Joe Mixon, I'd be picking the Bengals all day long. But Chase Brown, if you take a look, has not been very good, man. Moss and Chase Brown are split in time. It's just like if we look at the roster and we pull up the running back spot, Chase Brown has been okay. Receiving grade in the below the 60s. Run grade's pretty decent. He's been okay so far this year, you know. 29th in carries, 24th in yards. I mean, he's not a guy that's going to like shred it up like Saquon Barkley can. I think the Philadelphia Eagles just have the better roster. So I think they cover the two and a half points, and I think they win this game. I'm flip-flopping again. I went from the Eagles to the Bengals. Now I'm going back to the Eagles 27-24 over the Cincinnati Bengals. Next up, the reeling New York Jets take on the terrible New England Patriots, right? But... Drake May has looked pretty good, man. I'm very shocked. He looks very, very good. Behind a horrendous, horrendous, horrendous offensive line and wide receivers that just flat out aren't any good. He's got five touchdown passes in his first two games, and I think he's looked really, really good. Patriots fans should be excited. Now they just need to get him some help, some linemen that can block and some receivers that aren't babies and can actually catch, right? Jalen Polk has been a terrible pick. He's complaining. He's got a bad attitude. Dude's a joke. The Jets got to win this game, right? This is a do or die game for the Jets. If the Jets, who dominated the Patriots earlier in the year, lose this game, the wheels are falling off. I would even consider benching Aaron Rodgers and letting Jordan Travis, the rookie, play. That's how bad it's gotten if they lose to the Patriots. But they're on the road. The Jets, the Jets, the Jets. Can they win? They added Devontae Adams. That didn't matter. Aaron Rodgers threw a really bad interception. He looks cooked to me, guys. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think Aaron Rodgers is cooked? Because I think it's over for Aaron Rodgers. He's just not the dude from four or five years ago. He's just not. I think the Jets win this game, but barely. And you got to remember, New England is flying back from London, crossing the pond, so that's never an easy flight, right? But I like the Jets, who lost four in a row. Oh, my gosh. 23-13, I'm going with the Jets in this spot. I don't know. Aaron Rodgers. All right. Now, let's move on to a really exciting game. Well, it would have been an exciting game. Atlanta Falcons at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Unfortunately, Godwin, like, blew up his ankle. I don't know. They don't know if it's, like, the ankle that actually broke or the bottom of the tibia and the fibia that broke. That news hasn't been announced yet, but that ankle is trash. He's done for the year from the initial reports. And then on that, was it a touchdown? The touchdown grab, or it might have been a throw in the end zone. I don't remember if it was the actual touchdown or not, but Mike Evans' hamstring is torched, man. He's not going to play this week. It's really bad. He got up reeling in pain, man. I would be very surprised if Mike Evans suits up on Sunday for the Buccaneers versus the Falcons. I know it's a division game, but they need to get Evans healthy, especially with Godwin being done for the rest of the year. I'm assuming that Mike Evans doesn't play in that game. So that's why I'm going with the Atlanta Falcons to win this game on the road 24-20. to But that's because Baker Mayfield is a turnover machine, and he's probably going to be without his top two wide receivers. I don't like that at all whatsoever. Kirk Cousins bounces back in this game. He crushed me, man. We would have made so much more money this week if the Falcons would have won that game, but they really crapped the bed. But kudos to the Seahawks. They proved me wrong. Clap it up for the Seahawks. They played really well. DK Metcalf, he's week to week, though. This is a very interesting game as well. 
Arizona Cardinals at the Miami Dolphins. Tua, Tua, Tua. Is he going to play? I honestly cannot believe they're bringing him back right now. I think it's pretty disgusting. I mean, the dude didn't even get hit that hard and his lights got switched out like that. I think it's a... I don't know if it's a situation where the league net needs to step in or, like, there needs to be an adult in the room. Like, Mike McDaniel, the coach. How about you be like, hey, dude, why don't you just you know, put football on pause for the rest of the year. Use the offseason to clear your head and figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life. You want to keep playing ball, you want to risk it, or you want to move on to different things. But him coming back this year for a Dolphins team that's pretty much dead in the water, unless they go on a huge run and win like six of eight or seven of nine, you know what I mean, something crazy, the Dolphins season is over. So bringing him back in a lose-lose situation, he's either he can either get, get hurt again, and they're not going to make the playoffs anyway. I think that's really dumb. But enough of that tangent. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think Tua should come back? Do you think he should wait a couple weeks? Do you think he should take the rest of the year off? Let me know in the comments below. But the Cardinals had a big Monday night win over a very tough defense in the Chargers. They got a lot of help from the referees the last three minutes of the game, which was ridiculous. But... They still won. A win's a win. Tough win against a very good, not very good, a tough Chargers team. I like the Cardinals in this spot to get a win, depending on if Tua plays. We'll have to see. I'm probably still going to go with the Cardinals at plus 136. I like the Arizona Cardinals to win this game. The Dolphins just aren't playing with any juice. The defense isn't good. The offensive line isn't very good. Those things aren't going to change when Tua comes back. A light switch isn't going to get flipped on and they're going to be like the team they were last year. That's just not going to happen. That's why I like the Arizona Cardinals in this spot to get the win. I think they're going to score some points against this Dolphins defense that's not very good. I love Trey McBride. Marvin Harrison Jr. is really coming on. James Conner is running really tough, man. I like the Arizona Cardinals offense. That's why they get the win 27-13 in this spot. Next up is another very interesting game, right? Buffalo Bills on the road against the Seahawks. I can't figure out the Seahawks. The Seahawks go on the road across the country and beat the Falcons, and then they lose at home to the Giants, who got the brakes blown off them last week by a mediocre Eagles team. So I don't know who the Seahawks are. I would avoid betting on the Seahawks for the rest of the year because they're so unpredictable. You don't know what the heck's going on. Some weeks they show up. Some weeks they don't show up. And DK Metcalf, he's week to week. Right? I'm looking over my injury report. MCL sprain. He said he wants to try to make it back, but I feel like the Seahawks got to be a little cautious with DK Metcalf, especially because that NFC West is wide open and you don't want that MCL sprain to turn into a partial tear or something like that. I'm resting Metcalf, but who knows? It's the NFL. NFL coaches continue to do tons of dumb stuff. This is going to be a great game. The Buffalo Bills, it was a pretty close game. First, the Titans in the first half. The Titans' defense, very underrated. They're like top five in red zone defense, third down defense. They're very, they're a solid unit, right? But since their offense was so bad, the Bills took over in the second half and dominated. I think I like the Buffalo Bills in this spot, and adding Amari Cooper is a huge compliment to the other pieces they have on offense. I think James Cook will be a little more healthy. He didn't look 100% last week. He's still dealing with some injuries. So I'm going with the Bills in this spot. I like the Keon Coleman, Amari Cooper, Khalil Shakir, wide receiver room. That's a lot of fun. They got the great tight ends as well. Dalton and Dawson. I like the Buffalo Bills. In this spot, I got a score for you guys. I think it's going to be a close game, though. 23-20. It's never easy to play in Seattle, ever. That's why the Giants beating Seattle at home just still to this day blows my mind and knocked me out of Survivor for the year. That game, I, I see it in my dreams, guys. It's haunting me. It's haunting me! Buffalo Bills win this game 23-20. All right, next up, Saints at the Chargers. Man, the Saints are banged up. No Derek Carr. It looks like he could be back in week nine. He won't be back yet. So, the Saints get a little bit of extra rest from playing on Thursday night. The Chargers, however, have a short week. Could this be like an upset game? Possibly. This is a game I'm going to probably avoid, but taking the Saints in the seven points, I've been thinking about that because the Chargers just don't score a lot of points. But the Chargers' defense is really good, so they could really shut down the Saints 
No Raheed Shahid for the rest of the year. The quarterback situation has been pretty washed. You know what I mean? Rattler's been sacked 11 times the last two weeks, so the Chargers are probably going to eat. Are they going to get Bosa back for this week? We'll have to keep an eye on that. But it's going to be a close game, I think. I do like the Chargers to still win. The Saints are giving up a ton of points, 42 points on average the last two weeks. Yikes. The Saints have just been bad. So I'm going with the Chargers to win this game. Maybe a little bit closer than people think. 21-17, I'm going to guess. A little bit of a lower scoring game. And I feel like the Saints get a garbage time touchdown. And that's why it goes from 21-10 to 21-17. Make it appear to be a little closer than it was. But I think it's going to be a slow moving game. A lot of running. Not a lot of, a lot of action. The under 39 points is definitely in play for me as well. Next up, we have a really interesting game. Kansas City Chiefs. Raiders. The Raiders always play the Chiefs tough for whatever reason. So division games are always weird, right? But the Chiefs, Jalen Watson, cornerback, broken leg. Fibia and Tibia both broken. He's out indefinitely. For the Raiders, Aiden O'Connell's done. He's out the next five or six weeks. Gardner Minshew came in and played like a dumpster fire. Three picks, one lost fumble. The Raiders suck. No Devontae Adams. I feel bad for Brock Bowers, man. One of my favorite players in the draft. He continues to be unbelievably productive for a team that absolutely sucks. Kansas City Chiefs win this game 24-16, I think. Patrick Mahomes hasn't been great this year, man. Just look at the numbers and they'll tell you he has not been great. But the Chiefs play great situational football, man. When the game's on the line or it's a big third down, Mahomes continues to deliver. But he also continues to deliver the ball to the other team. He's been a pick machine this year. You can tell. Maybe going out and getting a guy like Cooper Cup could be huge for the Chiefs, man. Cooper Cup, Travis Kelsey, Xavier Worthy. I start to like that wide receiver room a little bit more. Chiefs win this game 24-16. I'm not in a game I'm excited for this week. It's probably going to be bad football. I don't love it. A lot of bad, weird games this week. Panthers at the Denver Broncos. The Panthers, in all the games they lost, they haven't covered the spread. Nine points seems like a big number versus the Broncos, but they probably ended up covering. I'm going 23-10 in this spot. The Carolina Panthers have a minus 133 scoring differential this year. Minus 133. That's remarkable, man. I don't know if I've ever seen a number that high this early in the season. They're letting up over 32 points per game on the road. Nothing looks good. Just let Bryce Young play. Get Andy Dalton out of there. God, the Panthers organization. Do you want a real GM? Hire me. Because whoever's running that organization, from the ownership to the GM, they're all clueless. Just let Bryce Young play. Get some value. You traded away all those picks for him. Goodness gracious, let the man play. Broncos win this game. In dominant fashion, 23-10. I think Bo Nix, Cortland Sutton, that could be a touchdown pair that we look for this week. This is one of my favorite games of the week coming up, guys. we got the Chicago Bears at the Washington Commanders. But there's a huge stinking butt. Jaden Daniels and his ribs. They need to stop running him so much, man. He's not that big of a guy. He's tall, but he's got narrow shoulders. And when he takes big hits by these men in the secondary at the safety position, and these linebackers that get a full head of steam, they're going to do some damage, man. So, But Mariota came in last week off the bench and played really well. The Bears' defense has been pretty good, though. If Jaden Daniels plays, I'm going with the Commanders. If not, I'm taking the Bears. So far, I'm going 28-27 for Washington. But no Jaden Daniels. I'm flipping it to the Bears. Right on Friday when I get my final picks during my live show every Friday. Make sure you guys check that out. I get my final picks. Last week I only flipped one game. I flipped to the Packers over the Texans because the injury report came out and they had like five starters out, right? So that's why you gotta tune into the Friday one. Get all the injury updates, who's in, who's out. Some of them are still up in the air, but for the major injuries, which we'll go over at the end of this video. Uh, there's some of them are solidified, but a lot of these guys with like soft muscle tissue injuries, it's kind of week to week stuff. We find out more on Friday. Commanders 28 27 so far. Dallas Cowboys at the 49ers. I'm going with the Cowboys in this spot, guys. And don't cut my head off because I'm wearing an Eagles jersey. I'm just calling it like I see it. 
I watched the tape again. Put in an eight-hour tape study day of all the games yesterday. Brock Purdy looks uncomfortable. He's forcing throws. He's throwing bad picks in the red zone. The dude looks shook. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he's having nightmares of the low paycheck he has right now and pressing, knowing that that contract situation is coming up. But he better start playing better or those numbers are going to go down considerably. (whistles) I'm going with the Cowboys. That's because Brandon Ayuk, MCL, ACL tear, he's done for the year. He's out. Debo's dealing with some kind of pneumonia type of situation, so I doubt that he's going to be ready for Sunday, right? Brock Purdy without his top two wide receivers. I like the Cowboys in this spot coming off a bye especially. They are on the road, but Ayuk's out, Debo's out, Purdy's off, 23-17 for the Dallas Cowboys, who... Get a nice long break coming off the bye. Get some guys healthy. Kind of figure out what our identity is going to be moving forward. Is Micah Parsons going to come back? We'll have to keep our our eye on that. It looks like he's trending towards possibly playing, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But Dallas Cowboys and four and a half points. Oh, boy, that's a good bet. Dallas Cowboys, San Francisco 49ers, 23-17. I'm going with the Cowboys. All right, and then our final game of week eight. New York Giants. New York Giants. How are you going to let Saquon Barkley walk? How? 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 Oh, my gosh. What's his name? Joe Sheen, the GM there? This dude's a joke. Let's get a guard who's mediocre instead of re-signing Saquon Barkley. But Saquon would be playing behind that trash offensive line, so... It is what it is. But I love the league neighbors. The Steelers, I did my power rankings, and people are killing me because I got the Steelers in the top five. They're going to win again. They're going to move, what are they, five and two now to six and two. Yeah, the Steelers are for real, man. Russell Wilson had to iron out some wrinkles in the first quarter, but the rest of the game, he played pretty damn good. And I told everyone, everyone from the jump, that Russell Wilson gives them a better chance this season at winning a championship and making a playoff run than Justin Fields. Russell Wilson is really good at throwing those balls up, the 50-50 balls, to guys like George Pickens. He just gives his wide receivers a chance to make plays. And when you guys got, they got guys like George Pickens, you got to allow them the opportunity to make plays. Justin Fields could not do that. He skips balls, he sails balls, he makes throws that are uncatchable for wide receivers. You got to give them a chance. Russell Wilson can do that. He's a little more cerebral of a guy, a little bit better about getting through his progressions. I like Russell Wilson better than Justin Fields right now. I don't love Russell Wilson by any stretch of the imagination. He's just better than Justin Fields. I like the Pittsburgh Steelers to dominate this game 27 to 10. The Giants just aren't very good. Losing to Andrew Thomas is huge. Who's going to block T.J. Watt? Who's going to block Alex Highsmith? You think the Eagles' D-line is good? Oh, my goodness. If I'm Daniel Jones, I'm quitting. I'm leaving. I'm I'm getting sick for this game. I got the flu, coach. I don't feel good. I'm not going to be able to play because the Steelers are coming to eat Daniel Jones for lunch. That dude's going to get his Jersey ripped off, his pants ripped off. He's going to be laying in Pittsburgh, ass naked on the 50-yard line, half dead. That's what the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to do to Daniel Jones this week on Monday Night Football in front of a nationally televised audience. Daniel Jones, I feel bad for you, man. It's not often I feel bad for Giants or Cowboys players, but I feel bad for Daniel Jones because he's going to get destroyed in this game. Good luck, Daniel Jones. The Giants continue to be a joke, and I love it. Guys, that's all my picks for Week 8 with the scores. I gave you a score for that game, right? I said 23-10. Oh, 27-10. Whatever I said, the Steelers are going to score a lot of points. The Giants are not going to score a lot of points. All right, NFL fans, that wraps up all my picks with scores for Week 8. I appreciate you guys staying with me during these picks. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, make sure you check out my memberships. And if not, just hit that like button and subscribe. I really appreciate that too. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. We're almost at 10K. I appreciate you guys. Peace.